on top of Falcon coming out, we now have the CDK4-6 inhibitor. So we have Paloma, which we're all familiar with, you know, showing that palbociclib, you know, has an improved progression-free survival, you know, almost doubling it, actually, to some way. It depends on who you talk to, 24 months versus mm -hmm. 10 or 12. Oh. You know, but now the big news, I think, you know, is what do we do? Ribociclib has now been developed. Okay, so ribociclib had its big announcement with a big clinical trial in the medicine three or four months ago. So, Kim, you want to talk about Mona Lisa? Yeah, well, you participated in so it? as you know, the Mona Lisa studies are looking at the Novartis <coughs> CDK4-6 inhibitor ribociclib. Um, and the, the CDK inhibitors, there's very slight differences in how much they target CDK4 versus CDK6. To date, I haven't really seen a huge differentiation between what that means to the clinic. If there's more CD6, I think, CDK6 inhibition, then there's more diarrhea. I might have that backwards. Um, some people postulate there's maybe some more neutropenia, depending on the differential inhibition of the four versus six. But we have two large studies, Mona Lisa two and the Paloma series of studies that look at palbociclib that have compared the CDK inhibitors layered on top of a type two aromatase inhibitor. In both studies, letrozole. And in both studies, there has been a double digit improvement in PFS when the CDK inhibitor was added to the letrozole backbone. So um, important studies, ribociclib has not been approved here in the United States, but I think we all kind of anticipate that it will be. Um, you'll like this, I think. I think we should just have like the companies at this year's ASCO meeting just you know, punch it out. <laughs> yeah. gonna, Very similar to the tax saving yeah. wars almost right. 20 years ago, you or know? The AI we remember wars. those. Yeah. AI wars. Exactly right. Exactly. Yeah. Because AI wars so. are probably because of the same companies. Right. You could be like the right. ringmaster or whatever. We'll just, <laughs> we'll just decide. So I right. think that's actually going to be the harder decision. I, I hope that my patients will see that the competition or having both might drive the patient costs down a little bit. If, if, I hope that that's going to be the case. Um, and so Mona Lisa II will be an important, it is an important study, it was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, similar benefits to what we saw with the Paloma study with the addition of palbociclib to a type 2 aromatase inhibitor. So a couple questions kind of related to that. So Mark, do you think there's any difference between the two drugs? I don't have any experience with ribociclib, but you just know, at least reading stuff, it doesn't yeah. look to me like there's a lot different. Just So people may, what about the side effect profile? Kim, you were participated in this. You're going to be named author on the paper, or you were? Yeah, I yeah. was. Um, you know, the, at the end of the day, there is this very teeny, teeny and I'm going to say teeny, teeny signal of QTC prolongation that was seen in, I think, less than 10 patients with the addition of ribociclib in the phase two studies. And that there were, I think, four deaths, some well-described, not well-described in the Mona Lisa II trial. That's not been described with palbociclib. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist, because assuming that these are same in class agents, I would imagine that if you looked hard enough, when you, it's, you know, if you look hard enough, you're going to see the signal if, in fact, it really is there. Um, it will be interesting to see what the actual label is for ribociclib. That's like, a, I think that's the big thing. You know, we all experience this with yeah. the aribulin approval. I don't know what it's like in your practice, but they saw QTC prolongation in a phase two study in like six patients. And in the label for aribulin, it says monitor potassium really? and magnesium. Do you? Do you? Yep. And Do you? No. You shouldn't be no, saying no, that. No, but, no, yeah, right. And it says consider getting an EKG. <laughs> Right. None of us do that when we're starting a ribulin in the metastatic Correct. setting. So again, I think that this is more of a, to be quite honest, I think it will be like, what really are the differences? And at least from where I sit, if you have to go down to there were four patients in a thousand patient study and there weren't zero in the 800 patient study, that tells me that at least from a toxicity standpoint, they're probably very similar. But I think we'll hear a lot about that because that's the only toxicity difference we can see comparing Paloma with Mona Lisa II. Um, again, I think I have a very different threshold of what I ask my patients to do, like with the aribulin example, if they're facing metastatic breast cancer. So um, I, I answer the toxicity is exactly the same. But for those of you who are following this kind of war of the CDK inhibitors, just be aware that there was this very small signal of QTC prolongation. Um, and there's post, going to be post-approval surveillance both for palbociclib and for ribociclib, and a signal will emerge, I believe. 
So if, it, if it's there, if sorry. it's there, yeah. So yeah. I guess the next question, you know, it's interesting. So they definitely have a little bit different pharmacology, as we said, like yeah. pharmacodynamics, maybe even different pharmacokinetics and metabolism. Will it kind of be like the aromatase inhibitors? I always wonder. You know, so in other words, if you're on palbo, and you have really bad neutropenia, like there was evidence now from the Asian populations, they seem to have a little bit more neutropenia, and you can't really get in the 125 dose of palbo. You know. Will there be differences that if they have trouble with PABO, we'll switch to RIBO and vice versa? You think that's going to happen? I yeah, we don't have data at this time, but one thing to note um, is <coughs> that it is an important issue. So with PALBO, neutropenia is the most common side effect, and same with RIBO as well. But with PALBO, the dose is 125, and the capsules come as 125. So if you have to dose reduce to 100, patients have to get a different capsule. But with RIBO, it's all 200 capsules. Right, it comes in a blister pack. So the dose reduction becomes much easier. And That's I think point. over time, we'll, we'll and see And there's data from RIBO with the Asian subpopulation from Mona Lisa too that it was actually probably, again, unfair cross-trial comparison. You just didn't see the extent of the neutropenia. Really? Yeah, that I think That's going to be a very, that may be a San, big thing. Uh, ASCO this year. So um, again, I am going to, I'm going to pull an Adam Brusky and say, <coughs> You know, whatever costs the least for my patient when they go down to the pharmacy. And to be quite honest, what is one of the things that's been a, a pretty sizable hassle with these drugs is you go into the patient's room, you recommend it, and then it takes you two weeks to. And mm -hmm. this is a patient who's either just progressed or just relapsed. They want to start a study. Yep. And so, you know, those things are actually going to drive the hassle factor is going to drive some of my prescribing patterns unless there's something that emerges that really shows a clear difference uh, between the two studies. I suspect the payers will too. I mean, I, yeah, I, I suspect right. that, that the label is going to be key, exactly what the parameters are of the label, and these will probably all be specialty pharmacy drugs, and the individual payers will negotiate contracts, and, and you may wind right. up with a preferred... One or the other, right. ...for your payer.